Courtney here with Smitty's Fly Box. Again, we're just gonna be going over uh, July's Intermediate Time Box, and it is a double-decker hopper. Just a little, fun little hopper pattern. Perfect for summertime um, when hoppers come out. And my favorite color is that olive color. So that's what I'm gonna be tying today, just to show you how to do this here. Uh, we're just gonna anchor our thread just here behind the eye from out our excess. And I like to coat the hook shank first with a layer of thread and you want to make sure i found when you're dealing with foam bodied flies I like to use a coarse thread so the foam doesn't slip around as much it will still slip and rotate but it gives something for the glue to adhere to and something for that foam to really bite into as well so i like using that rather than a flat thread so first before we get started i'm just going to take a little bit of glue here I like to avoid Zappa Gap on my foam flies, Any the glue that's going to be exposed anyways, if you can see it, just because it usually dries kind of cloudy and white and gets crusty. So I like liquid fusion. It dries pretty clear. It takes a little bit longer to set up than your Zappa Gap, um, but it does hold pretty good. So I'm just going to add a little drop there with my bodkin and just spread that around the thread, and that'll kind of soak in as we tie and I'll add a little bit more at the end okay so we're just gonna take our foam body punch and I just like to center this just dead center on the hook shank and they just want to make sure you have about equal parts hanging out the front and hanging out the back and we're gonna start our wraps just right here just in front of the hook point I'm just gonna hold that there bring one thread wrap straight up and over two thread wraps I'm gonna pull down pretty tight to get that foam to cinch three wraps and then I should be good for there from there so if you kind of look at the bottom here as you wrap that foam will kind of encase around the hook shank okay so now next we're just gonna be tying in our legs and we just got these reptile round rubber legs here I've already went ahead and knotted them but you're just gonna tie a simple overhand knot in two strands of the rubber legs and we're just going to pair these right to the side i like to have the knee of that rubber leg material just about halfway back on that back end of my foam and i'll do two wraps there i'm going to bring that back just a little bit though about right there and then on the opposite side as well we'll do the same thing about halfway back I just hold that rubber leg there do a loose wrap grab it two wraps and i can reposition these rubber legs where i need them my whip finisher to split these legs right here on the back end and i just cut out the top leg just close to the knot without cutting your main leg there and then i just trim these legs going up the front right off just as close as i can to the foam you could add a little drop of glue there just to help hold that as well Okay, so now we're ready for our little wing indicator yarn. This is just chartreuse poly yarn. That's what we're using on this one. And I'm gonna trim this, but I just grabbed a little clump here. So from your rope that you got, I usually just take out a strand and then split it in half. So that's about a half a strand. So I'm just gonna center that on top of the foam, bring my thread up and around two wraps. You can kind of see that it's just kind of the way I do this, I try to minimize my wraps on these so you don't end up with a bulky thread under body. And then I fold that back and then I'm going to kind of push that yarn forward and then grab it with my thread. And that'll help it lay back straight. So you can kind of see how that foam still wants to kind of spin there. We're going to add more glue to that. I'm going to cut this straight across here. I don't want the wing to extend all the way back. And then I'm going to tie in my indicator foam. Just this yellow indicator foam just helps you see it a little bit better on the water. And I usually cut those to match the thickness or just shy of the thickness of the hopper foam. I'll anchor that down. So now once I have my indicator tied down, I'm just going to bring the thread up and over the top. So I'm just going to cross that thread right across the top of the body and then bring it down. So it's basically just like on a 45 degree angle 
and then do one full turn right around, making a straight turn. Just compress that foam onto the hook. And I'm not gonna tie this down yet. I like to just do this right at the end with the indicator. Okay, so then next, our next step is just tying in our last sets of legs here, just up the front. So I'm just gonna simply just hold that to the side, bring my thread up and around with two wraps, pinch that in, and on the back side as well, you can just slip this leg just right up in between your thread and the foam. Let the weight of your bobbin hold that leg in place and then bring it around for a few more wraps there to hold that down. And then we can fold our indicator We'll tie that guy down and then we'll trim our indicator short here just off the front and then we're good to go that's all it is so i'm just going to trim these legs now just just down to size whatever size you really like i try to leave them a little longer so they wiggle in the water and then as you whip finish you can whip finish right around the foam and the legs if you want i like to just kind of pick the head of the foam up just bring my thread right behind the eye of the hook and do the whip finish there And then that's it. Add a little uh, more glue here to the bottom. Just kind of spread that along your thread wraps and your tie-in points. And that makes a nice durable fly that'll last you for a full day of fishing on the water. Just kind of spread this in here on these wraps. That's it, that's the double decker hopper. Good one to fish, the good color variation. Um, with the olive really natural coloring i usually tie quite a few of these just in a, in a session here just tying at the bench here let them set up and throw them in my box and they're ready to go so let us know how you guys do with it i think you really like this pattern quite a bit um, it's been really effective for us and we use it all the time in the summer months so enjoy it.